What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel, which is Pulse Metrics, the channel you know and love. Today we are going to be predicting Clash at the Castle 2024. This is gonna be like a little bit of a shorter video since there are only five matches and I doubt they're gonna make any new matches with the uh, go home shows for uh, Clash of the Castle, so um, we're just gonna predict what's there and we're gonna have a fun time doing it. One quick disclaimer, as usual, if you disagree, please let me know down in the comments what you agree, what you change, what you disagree with. So without further ado, let's get right into the video cue intro. <laughs> Alrighty, kicking things off, we have right there, we have the Triple Threat Women's Tag Team Championship match between Albafire Isla Dawn, Shayna Baszler, Zoe Stark, and Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair. Honestly, I, I, I couldn't care less. I, I was wrong when they said the they were going to make the... Uh, the uh, championships relevant again, so I'm just picking Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair to win this. Mainly because I I just don't see them turning on each other just yet. Like not not this time. I think they're gonna eventually turn each other when they both qualify for Money in the Bank and they both want it, and then they're eventually gonna turn, drop the titles to someone like uh, maybe Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler, and then eventually fight each other at SummerSlam, which I cannot wait to see. And if I had to choose who was going to play the heel here, I would say Jade Cargill. I mean, it just fits. Like, Bianca Belair's no heel. But either way, that's going to be a fun match to watch, and I know we will still have our WWE Women's Tag Team Championships the same. Alrighty, next up, uh, right there, we have Sami Zayn and Chad Gable for the Intercontinental Championship. Not gonna lie, I'm actually digging this Alpha Academy storyline, and Sammy will win this because I think that this is the time where Otis finally snaps. I'm pretty certain it on on it too. Uh, I think it will eventually lead to like some Alpha Academy rules match between Otis and Chad Gable, and I just don't see Sammy Zayn dropping the title before SummerSlam. It just it just wouldn't make any sense. So, overall, um, Chad Gable's gonna ask Otis to cheat, even though Otis did, uh, get mad at Sammy. Um, he's gonna, you know, eventually know that it was an accident that, uh, Chad Gable pushed Sammy into, uh, Otis. He's gonna eventually find that out. He's gonna finally get sick of Chad Gable. He's gonna turn on Chad Gable, which will allow Sammy Zayn to hit the Aluva kick on the corner for the win. And as for Sammy, after he wins this, I'm not really sure what he does next, but I hope that his next challenger is relevant. Uh, no one, I mean, Chad Gable's amazing, but this has been going on for like four months now. Like, why are we still doing it? All right, next up, we have our WWE Women's Championship match between Bayley and Piper Nevin. This match is stupid. There could have been any other challengers that they put uh, up against Bailey, but they had to choose Piper Nevin, and you know that Bailey's retaining. I think uh, they're gonna eventually go to the top rope. Bailey's gonna hit like some sick move, and then go, and then uh, from the top rope, and then uh, eventually go up to the top rope back, and then hit the diving elbow for the win. Maybe uh, even a uh, rose plant to finish it off. And again, like the. They're just not going to make anyone lose. Like, out around this area of talent, they're just not going to make anyone lose before SummerSlam. Everyone's so excited for Bailey versus Nia Jax. It's long overdue. So, like, they're just not going to make anyone uh, lose. Not, and they're certainly not going to make her lose right before the big event. As for Piper Nevin and Chelsea Green, I, I hope they're the ones to dethrone uh, Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair so they go into a rivalry. I don't want... Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair to drop them now, but maybe on a random episode of SmackDown after Money in the Bank, I'm not really sure. Alright, and our co-main event, at least what I think will be the co-main event anyway, we have Drew McIntyre versus Damian Priest. This is probably going to be the best match of the night, but I will say one thing. Drew has to win this. Do not give it to Damian. No. I think after, like, you know, the Judgment Day, you know, finally implodes, at least what I think they'll implode, uh, Finn is finally gonna snap, Drew's finally, you know, gonna 
hit like a couple claymores, pin him, which will allow Drew to go to SummerSlam and face Gunther, which at that time, I think CM Punk will try to interfere uh, with the match. And as for Damien, this is a way for the, us to finally see uh, Dark Side Damien versus uh, Demon Finn Balor at SummerSlam, which is something that everyone's been waiting to see, and I cannot wait for that if it eventually happens. Again, like, uh, at the start, like, whenever since you cashed in a WrestleMania, I, I just don't think Damien Priest is world title material. He's been the most boring champion I've ever seen, you know. All, I mean, he's just way better as a singles competitor. Drew, on the other hand, is world title material. You know, this is his hometown. You know, he he needs to get an he needs to finally win a world title in front of his home country. It just wouldn't make any sense if Damian won. Like zero. The only way that I would see Drew McIntyre losing here is if CM Punk eventually costs him. The world title in this match, but I don't, I don't think that will happen. But if that does happen, you know, Drew McIntyre uh, will face CM Punk at SummerSlam, and then you know, with the rivalry building up, Damian Priest will face Gunther. But I don't think that's gonna happen. I think uh, Option Two will win. And finally, we have our main event, which is Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles in an I Quit match. Honestly, I take it back. This is probably going to be the best match because it's like, you know, these two could literally do anything except say I quit. But overall, like, I, I have Cody. I mean, like, you know, AJ Styles is at the peak of his career. I, I, he's hit rock bottom in his career. Like, no, he doesn't need to win this. Like, Cody, co again, like, Cody, we're finally, like, getting to the point where, okay, maybe he can lose this. Maybe he can lose that. But uh, honestly, that's not really going to happen in this situation. However, I am calling it now. Cody Rhodes will eventually lose the title to uh, Randy Orton. Now, I, you, ha you guys heard me all the way back in my uh, WrestleMania 40 uh, reaction that he was going to. But as for AJ, I hope he does have one more, um, one more uh, run left in him after this fight. And at WrestleMania 41, I I really hope we do see a last time ever match between him and John Cena because that would be lit if they, that'll eventually happen. Overall, we're getting close to the end of AJ Styles' career. He do, he needs to put Cody over in this one, and Cody Rhodes has so many other challengers like he shouldn't lose to AJ Styles. No disrespect to AJ. Alright guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure to leave a like on this video and make sure to subscribe. We're on the road to 500 subscribers. I'm trying to get monetized very, very soon. So without further ado, I'll see y'all guys in the next time I upload. Peace!